So Jonah's being told to arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it. Here is a word that Jonah received to go to this great city to cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. People don't think their wickedness is coming up before the Most High, but their wickedness goes up before him. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish. He didn't go. We see him not obeying the voice of the Most High. And when you don't obey the voice of the Most High, it doesn't matter who you are, your prophet, it doesn't matter. Uh, expect bad things to happen to you. This is This is common sense. And then when bad things happen to these wicked people, we have to call them what they are. When bad things start to happen to these people, they point the fingers at other people. It's because of this person and that person. And they never look in the mirror and see themselves. But on judgment day, it's going to be them and the most high. So he, look at this, flee the Tarshish from the presence of Yahuwah. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. He wanted to jump in one of the ships of Tarshish. It's too soon. The ships of Tarshish is after. He, the, the ships of Tarshish is going to bring the, the sons home. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Most High. And we know we know what happens here. Jonah 3, 1 through 3. Now the word of Yahuwah came to Jonah the second time. You didn't listen the first time. Here it is the second time. If you don't listen to something the Most High has commanded you, don't expect him to say, okay, I will let it go. No, the word will come to you a second time. Same word. Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. And Jonah arose and went. He was told to go, arise, get up, go. And he went. Went is the past of go. He went to Nineveh according. He went to Nineveh because of what he felt in his heart. No, he went according to the word of Yahuwah. This is how the Most High works. He, he does everything by his word. And when his people come out, you see, or when his people do whatever they said, they are following him and it, it, it becomes him that's doing it. Now, Nineveh was exceedingly great city, three day journey. Okay, next scripture. Here is Micah, one and one. We see the word of Yahuwah that came to Micah. So the word of the Most High coming to all these men, Zephaniah. One and one, the word of Yahuwah came to Zephaniah. We sing this word coming to them. And there's a message that comes with this word. Zechariah 1, 1, and 1 through 6. In the eighth month of the second year of Darius, the word of Yahuwah came to Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Idu, the prophet, saying, Yahuwah has been very angry with your fathers once again. Sometimes the word is good and sometimes the word is bad. It depends on the person. It depends on the situation. It depends on what are you doing. See, for all of us that's made that journey, that left these wicked lands and within the borders, the word will be different to us. You understand? It will be different to us. But those on the outside, they will feel like outsiders. That's why many are making plans. To leave that wicked place. They're becoming righteous. The more righteous you become, the more you get into his word, the more righteous you're going to become, the more Shabbat you keep, the more Kadash you become, and the more wickedness you will understand the land is in. The land is wicked that you're in, and you will not feel comfortable. You should not be comfortable in the land of captivity unless you are wicked. You get my point here? There is no way you are comfortable in captivity and you're righteous. See, you're wicked. And these teachers need to be told you are wicked if you're comfortable in the land of your captivity. Therefore, say to them, thus says you who of hosts, return to me. Here's the word, says you who of hosts, and I will return to you. 
says Yehovah of hosts, do not be like your fathers. He's telling, he's telling us today, don't be like your fathers, to whom the former prophets proclaimed, saying, thus says Yehovah of hosts, turn now from your evil ways and your evil deeds. You see, our people today have evil ways and evil deeds. You can point to their evil deeds. Look what they're doing. That's evil. Look at what they're doing. They're keeping Passover in Babylon. Look at what they're doing. That's evil deeds. This group collecting tithes, money, evil deeds. They are calling on G-O-D, evil deeds. They are calling on Christ, evil deeds. We don't understand evil deeds. They're blowing on that horn that comes from the deer that the Jewish people started blowing on it because it's in it's in the Babylonian Talmud and they're blowing on this horn because the Jewish people are blowing on that horn and the Most High didn't command us to blow on that horn evil deeds these are evil deeds they're drinking wine from Edom they're drinking Edom's wine on what they call the Passover, evil deeds. Don't they know these wine? They even call them spirits, evil deeds. Are these people trying to make their own wine? If they're gonna drink wine, are they trying to make their own wine? No, no, look at the bottles. Look at the bottles, evil deeds. And they would not hear nor heed. D -d -d all the, all, listen. These teachers, they're scrolling. They know what's out. They know what teaching is out. They know who teaching what. And they know a lot of what they're doing is evil. They know the teaching on tithes. They know that crap came from Christianity. They know. They know it was the Roman Catholic Church that said in one of their councils that uh, uh, the Council of Trent, they know that they said that, the, that Louis is no longer priest and that the Roman Catholic Church assumed the priesthood. They know this. And so now that we can collect the tithes and they continue to do evil deeds. And he will not hear. Listen, the Most High not going to hear from these people and he's not going to. But they did not hear nor heed me and he's not going to listen to them. Your fathers, where are they? Here is a question the Most High is asking. Our fathers, those that was in the wilderness committing all kind of wickedness, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? No. Moshe said, I will die and surely you guys will go off. So I'm going to leave as a witness heaven and earth. He left heaven and earth as a witness that the word of the Most High stand and that we should keep it. It says, yet surely my words and my statutes, which I command my servants, the prophets, did they not overtake your fathers? Don't we understand what happened? How the word of the Most High overtook our fathers? So they returned and said, just as Yahuwah of hosts determined to do to us according to our ways and according to our deeds, so he has dealt with us. It's almost as if, you know, he did, we did what we did, and he did what he did. Here is Luke. You don't see this much in the New Testament, but we have an example in the so-called New Testament. Of course, the word of Yahuwah never, here's another point. The word of Yahuwah never came to Paul. Never, ever will you see that. But all through the scripture here I've been going through, we see the word of the Most High coming to these people. Paul got a revelation. And this revelation, it was between him and whatever evil Ruach that was, that was dealing with him. But it was a revelation, you know. Uh, this is what he said. This is coming from him. He didn't say the word of the Most High came to me. The word of the Most High came to John, son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. Another point. The Most High's word comes to his people the most in the wilderness. When this group in these last days, when the time comes, this group go into the wilderness, the word of the Most High will come to the people once again from the most high himself when they was in the wilderness and they was at that mountain and it was a meeting at the mountain the word of the most high came to them from his mouth 
Moshe wasn't speaking. He was speaking. And when they heard it, they heard the lightning and the thundering and they saw the fire and the smoke. They was afraid for their life. They heard the word of the Most High. It came to them. And once again, what he done in the past, he's going to do again. We wonder why. In Matthew 23, 37 to 39, we wonder why Yahushua made the statement, Oh, Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stoned those who are sent to her. These men was killed and stoned because they was carrying the word of the Most High. And the wicked people didn't like the word that they carried. And so see, if you're righteous, you should have the word of the Most High in your mouth, in your heart, and in your mind. You have to be consumed in his word so you don't get tripped up. And when this happens, you're going to see people come against you heavily. How often I want to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. Look at us today. The house is left desolate. Yahushua said not one stone will be left upon another. The house is desolate. And the people are scattered in all the earth. What happened? How did this happen? Yahshua, you ended up in the land of your captivity. For I say to you, you shall see me no more till you say, Barak is he that come in the name of Yahuwah. He's saying here, the next time you see me, when he come back to cleanse, it will be said, Barak is he that come in the name of Yahuwah. Now I have to go into second Ezra. My son said to give examples. I should have been finished by now. But my son said, give this example. He helped me with this. He said, give this example. And he said, Daddy, give them this and give them this. And I said, OK, I will do it. He told me to give this as an example. And this is my this is my youngest son here. This is second Ezra chapter one. And he also told me to give examples where the men were told to do things not normal. Again, sometimes the word that the Most High, what come to you, it may not be what you want to hear. So I'm going to read through 2nd Ezra chapter 1. The second book of the prophet Ezra. Of course, Ezra is Ezra, the son of Sariah, the son of Azirah son of Hekiah, son of Shalom, son of Zadok, son of Ahitab, son of Ahijah, son of Phineas, son of Elah, son of Amaria. You see these names? Son of Azariah, son of Meredith, son of Arna, son of Uzzah, son of Borth, son of Abishua, son of Phineas. Oh, we know these names from the wilderness. Son of Eliezer, son of Aaron, of the tribe of Louis. So we're seeing here genealogy. Remember, the wicked one says, strive not in genealogy. Here is Ezra's direct bloodline to Aaron. And Ezra's Louis, he is from Louis, who was a captive in the country of Medes, which is modern day Iran, in the region of Artaxerxes, king of Persians. The word of Yahuwah came to me saying, here is the word of Yahuwah coming to Ezra. And once again, it's, a di it's order. It's the direction. Go and declare to my people their evil deeds. He's being told, go and declare to my people their evil deeds. Once again, this is something they may not want to hear. And what he's going to do, the Most High is going to use Ezra to speak to him, through him to his people of their evil deeds. And he's being told to go. Remember, you have to get up and do something.